welcome back. We're on uh, day six of the Porsche Party Dress Sew Along, which means we're right near the very end. Today we're going to be finishing off the shoulder seams and also the hems, and then talking about the um, this line that you can do up the bust that will curve it around um, and shape it around here so that you don't get a bust fold line if you're doing a lady size and you're larger busted. So um, we are going to jump straight in and do the neck shoulder line. In fact, the knit shoulder line is what I was going to say. So we're going to do the knit unlined option first of the shoulders. Now, if you have been following the tutorial, uh, this is where what you would have done your very first thing before you did anything else. Um, and what that allows you to do is if that stitched along here first, is when you do your neckline, you can finish it in one continuous uh, motion from the back all the way down to the front uh, which does give a really nice finish at the shoulder and that's why we put that in that order in the tutorial but uh, we're doing it in this order as I said before so that I can show you all of the different options all in one go and it's fine it's just a different technique um, you get a different finish um, and then you can see which one you prefer and do it the other way around next time if you prefer now if you are doing a baby size or a um, or a doll size what I suggest is while you've got this um, uh, shoulder uh, the, the the sleeve hem open is that you finish that turn it under do a rolled hem whatever finish you would like to do on the on the um, on the sleeve line now because the baby one and the dolls one is only about this big so once you've done your shoulder seam together that's really hard to finish that tiny little hole so um, if you are doing those, do that first, um, so skip ahead to that bit in the video and then come back and do the shoulder seam afterwards. But for all of the other sizes, you can uh, pin and stitch your shoulder seam now. Now what I always do is start at the shoulder and work my way out and what you're looking to do is the same as you've done on um, all your other seams, it's just make sure you've got uh, kind of similar tension between the two layers so that you're not pulling um, one to fit the other. The two seams should be exactly the same length. Um, if they are not it's possible that because we've done it in this method um, that you've um, uh, um, not quite lined up the um, uh, this bit here correctly you've got one seam allowance bigger than the other if you're doing it in the order of the tutorial though this should be exactly the same length from here to here so um, I but that said um, it's easy enough when you're cutting out to accidentally take away a millimeter there add two millimeters there and then the next thing you know you've got um, you know add it here and there here and there and you've got half a centimeter difference at this end so I always start at the um, um, at the furthest point away from the hem or at the point of the body where I want it to fit the best. So for here it's the neckline and I'm going to pin outwards and when I stitch as well I will start my stitch from here and stitch outwards and then that way if I end up with one section of the um, uh, sleeve hem longer than the other which ideally wouldn't happen but it does um, uh, then I would just trim this and get this nice and accurate again at the end um, and check as well um, I would hold um, if I had to trim one I would hold the other sleeve line up to it and check it was the same length so that um, then I'm trimming um, so then I, I'm, I'd trim the other one as well to make sure that they both match because I don't want them to to not match um, I want them to be falling at the same place down my arm or whoever's arm that you're making it for so again I'm starting at the shoulder seam I'm moving outwards and when I sew I'm gonna um, flip the material over and sew in that same way as well um, from the shoulder outwards so there we go we have pinned or clipped or whatever you would like um, now go away and stitch from the neckline outwards on both of them so we've stitched along the shoulder lines here now before you go finishing off the seam if you're doing a lady size or in fact um, any kind of size at all if you know that your model is taller or shorter than the um, st than what's stated on the pattern like for example if you're doing um, a um, you're blending sizes for a child or 
um, you've got a doll that is 16 inches, not 18. Um, in fact, if you're using a, um, a 16 inch doll, um, then there's probably a few other places you want to adjust as well. But anyway, um, if you know that height is uh, potentially an issue for you, this is another place where um, I'd suggest you try the garment on. Tr turn it the right way out, try it on, um, you know, the right way out and see what it looks like. If you're not happy with where this um, V is sitting and or where the under bust line is sitting, um, then what I'd suggest you do is then take it off, turn it the wrong way out, so it's like this, it's inside out, and try it on again. Then what you can do is lift these shoulders up and pin further down. So let's say um, you're finding that the um, this V is way too low on you, um, you're, I don't know, five foot four or something, and you haven't adjusted it and you wanna see how it goes, or you're bigger busted and you're finding there's too much cleavage, something like that, then what I would do is pin it, say, half an inch, three quarters of an inch, an inch further down, um, see what it's like, and pin all the way along here and then try it on again inside out. And the beauty of doing that is you can see what it would look like hiked up without having to stitch it. Um, and if you've got it inside out, the pins or clips are on the outside of the garment, so they're not going to pin you as you come in a, on or off. And if you've got someone there to help you, they can move these pins up and down um, so that you can see what it's like. And and as well, when you're trying it on, you don't have all of this bunched up under your shoulder. Um, uh, on your shoulder line distorting how it would look so um, there's a little tip for fitting now the last thing for the knit um, unlined option is to finish these off so if you're happy with how that sits um, either trim these to I would do on the shoulder probably I would take off half the seam allowance that way you've got a really neat line and it's there's not going to be any bulk on the shoulder seam um, or you could just trim them up and press it open so that it's um, distributing that seam allowance that's not going to create a little bulk line or what I'm going to do is I'm going to surge along so that that's all nicely finished. There we go all done I've surged that um, and then the last thing I'm going to do is turn it um, well I'll do this from the outside first um, in, inside out first is I'm going to press that because I've surged it together I'm going to press that towards the back if I had left it open I would um, left it raw I would press it open um, and then turn it um, right side out um, and then the garment is almost done we've just got a few little last bits to do um, I will see you for hemming a little bit later next up we're going to do the woven shoulder lines Here we go, so this is the woven version of the pattern and we're doing the shoulder lines here. Um, exactly the same stuff applies as with the knit version that you will find the front is um, shorter than the back. That doesn't matter, you can just lift the, um, the seam line here up and um, then pin or clip along. And we're pinning or clipping from the um, the neckline outwards and the reason for that is that if your garment has stretched or you've not cut it as accurately as you thought you had um, by the time you get to this end here um, you will then see it and you can make an adjustment cut it um, along this bit to make sure that then your um, your sleeve hem is the same length um, at each of these ends um, uh, I always do from the um, main part of the garment outwards or from the bit that I want fitted correctly outwards in case I need to adjust it to hem. And then exactly the same on um, this other side here. Um, I'm going to pin from the shoulder seam out towards the hem um, or clip, whatever you've got. And um, then I'm going to stitch in the same way. So I'm going to stitch from the shoulder seam um, out to the hem. Um, and um, then if there's any need to adjust it, um, which I don't think there will be because that looks all right, then I can adjust. So um, I want you to go and do that now. We're stitching and pinning from the, um, the neckline outwards. So something I should have reminded um, about earlier is if you're doing a baby size or a doll size that you want to skip ahead in the video and hem the the bottom of the sleeve first before you do the shoulder seam that way it'll still be open and you can hem along um, otherwise it turns into this really tiny circle that's okay to get over my machine that's a size three to four but if it was one of the tiny weeny ones that's really difficult so um, 
I'd recommend you hem the sleeve first if you're doing a tiny size. Now, um, before you go any further, what I'd recommend you do, just like the knit version, is that you try this on, um, turn it the right way out, try it on, see if you like where this um, bust V is sitting on you or your model, and where this under bust V is sitting as well. Um, if you're not happy with it, one of the ways I'd suggest you adjust um, is like we talked about earlier, um, I would turn it um, back inside out so that it's like this again and then I would um, pin start with half an inch and you could go even to almost an inch depending on how uh, what bigger size if the lady sizes have more of a curve here so you can pin a bit further down and just hike the whole thing up so because if you pin that that uh, down half an inch an inch down what it does is moves the whole garment on you up a little bit so um, particularly if you're doing a ladies one and you're finding this too busty too low on you or your fabric is stretched that kind of thing um, then um, uh, uh, try it on inside out with it pinned along there see how you like the fit if you like it um, stitch again where you want your seams and then you can finish up the seam allowance afterwards. Now I don't need to do that because this is for my daughter and I know that's the right size for her and I know what the fit is like so I'm happy with that there. The last thing for me to do on the shoulders of this woven version is to finish them. So um, once again we can grab our um, trusty bias tape and you can, uh, you've got two options. Um, what you could do is um, uh, do the same bias tape finish um, that we've done in the other areas along the shoulder so it's exactly the same as what we've done before you would uh, trim it down stitch the bias tape on fold it over and top stitch it down giving it all a good press and then press the bias tape towards the back of the fabric that way um, you get a nice smooth line up and over your shoulder um, or what you could do is um, serge it um, or if you really don't want any bulk there you could just open the seam out and press it open. Um, I don't like that because it leaves the raw edges but um, one way that you could reduce bulk if you're serging um, if you want it really nice and flat over the shoulders is you could serge each seam allowance separately and open it up but that's um, uh, that's a uh, unless you've got a really thick fabric I probably wouldn't do that I'd just search it in one or do the bias tape so um, you can go ahead and do your whatever finishing you're going to do now there we go I have searched mine or you could do the bias tape if you prefer <coughs> excuse me if you have um, searched or bias taped the seam allowances together um, uh, open it up press it towards the back um, and then pop it aside and fast forward to where we get to the next bit uh, which will be the hemming and then also the um, uh, the sidelines for the bust if you're doing one of the lady sizes and want to do that. So we are now going to attach the lining to the main part of the dress. Um, it's going to be exactly the same whether you're doing woven or knit um, and we're going to do around down the front of the V and around the back and down um, and finish um, this bit here. Uh, we are not going to do the shoulder seams yet, that's the very last bit we do. Uh, we do this bit front uh, V and the back bit as well first. So um, there are two different ways you could do this and I've got my dress here um, that I was wearing in the very first video to show you one of the options because the um, uh, the lace fabric is, uh, that I'm doing for my daughter is going to be the other option. So if you are doing a garment where the outside of the um, dress is not totally see-through and you're just lining it either for warmth or to provide a bit of backing or in this case this fabric is um, uh, it's uh, ever so slightly see-through so you can't see straight through it whereas with the lace you can see straight through and you can see the seams of the garment underneath. So um, this garment here is it's not totally see-through so what I want is to have the outside of the garment um, with no seam allowances showing um, and the inside of the garment with no seam allowances showing so basically all of the seam allowances are on the very inside between the, uh, the dress and the lining. So if you are doing this kind of one where it's you can't see straight through it and you're wanting to have it finished on the inside and on the outside of the dress with the seam allowances um, and all the raw edges tucked in the middle what you need to do is get your dress so that it is the wrong way out and the lining so that it is the right way out and you're going to put the dress 
into the lining so that they are <coughs> excuse me so that they are right sides together now just to show you what I mean I've turned this inside out so <coughs> oh excuse me so this is how I would have stitched it I've actually now top stitched around here so you can't see my seam allowance on the um, the V here but um, uh, that if I, before I top stitched it you would have seen this uh, seam allowance here and the way that I did it was I've got my um, uh, my dress here, my lining here, if you look inside the dress, um, they are right sides together. Um, and I've put, you can either put the dress into the lining or the lining into the dress, whichever way around you prefer. But they need to be right sides together as you're stitching them together. And we're going to stitch along this V and then we're going to turn the whole thing inside out. And when we turn the whole thing inside out, um, then you get this nice finished look where you've got seam allowances hidden on the outside, seam allowances hidden on the inside and you would only ever see the raw edges if you looked up inside your lining. So that's one way um, to do it. So if you are um, doing it with a fabric that is um, not totally see-through, do that now. Get your dress, um, uh, your dress wrong side out and your lining right side out and then you're going to put the lining into the dress. If on the other hand you are doing it with a um, a see-through fabric like this where your um, your outer part of your fabric is not actually the dress the lining is the dress and the outer part is just basically decoration making it look how you want it to look so if you've got any kind of stretch lace any kind of beaded or embellished layer um, I like if you're doing chul with beads or diamantes or I mean this could be a wedding gown if you did it full length and um, put a you know a chul embroidered um, layer on it <laughs> there's all kinds of options of what you could be doing if you're doing that then you want to follow what I'm going to do here which I have got my lining um, where is my top here we go so I've got my lining um, uh, right side out and I've got my dress right side out too and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch them so that my lining is uh, with the raw edges underneath um, once I've finished. Well, this is kind of what the final look will be. <coughs> so my um, seam allowances are on the outside. Sorry, my seam allowances are um, in between. Yeah, my seam allowance for the see-through layer, the um, the outside part of the garment, um, is hidden in between the outside part and the inside part. But also my seam allowance for the uh, the main part of the dress, the lining, is also on the inside. So if you look inside my dress, it will have unfinished edges, um, or if you've surged them surged edges but what I want when I look at the garment is I don't want to look through my lace and see a raw edge here from the lining I want the raw edges to still be tucked inside so that when you look at my lace and look at my dress underneath you can see the seam allowance from the lace um, but you're always going to um, and then um, it's all smooth underneath so to do that um, turn both of your um, uh, your garments, your outside part and your inside part right way out and then what we're going to do is put the um, the right part of the right side part of the garment let me just pull this down I'm going to put that into the lining now I'm going to tidy this up off camera because there's not enough space to do it here neatly I want to hang it up and flip it around and stuff but um, just to kind of demonstrate I'm putting the uh, the lining into the sorry the outer layer into the lining and then when I flip them through um, once I've stitched it and flipped it through um, what I will end up with is the um, the seam allowances from the um, uh, from the lining facing to the inside of the garment and of the outside layer as well so I don't know if that makes at all sense, but um, if you're unsure for the type of fabric you've got, what I would recommend you do is put one into the other, clip it, don't use pins because when you're turning it inside out you'll end up with pins getting caught and then you might pull your nearly finished garment. 
um, clip it or baste it to check and then you can turn it the right way out and check that the, <coughs> that the seam allowances are where you want them either on the inside of the garment or sandwiched between the two layers so this one I want them all on the inside so what I've done is I've got my um, both layers are facing right side out and I've put the one that I want outside onto the inside for us to stitch and then once we've finished it I will flip it right way out so that it's on the outside. So I'm going to tidy this up and get this all ready. Um, you do the same, pop it in and then we're going to do some pinning. Right, so I've now got my dress, uh, my my <laughs> outside of my dress, fully inside my lining. Or if you're doing it with an opaque one where you've got the dress and the lining, um, then your um, your lining should be inside your dress, and they should be right sides together. So. Um, I am now going to pin around my V of my neckline. Um, again, you can use clips, but what I would suggest is for the actual point of the V, and that's where I would start my pinning, is um, use um, a pin so that you can go um, straight down with the pin which gives you a reference on where to pivot uh, when you're stitching down one side and back up the other. Alternatively you could draw a line with some tailor's chalk so that you know where to pivot um, and then either clip or pin um, the rest of this V. Don't worry about the back, don't worry about the sleeves yet, we'll get to those bits um, soon enough um, but we want to do um, this um, V bit first and what you're looking for here um, is ideally a nice crisp um, edge to the V um, and if you've got fabrics here with differing um, if you're doing the knit version because you'll be doing exactly the same thing for the woven if you're doing the knit version here like me um, and you've got uh, fabrics with differing levels of stretch um, you might want to use more pins rather than less for example my lace here has a lot more in fact going across the bias has a lot more stretch this way than um, this uh, pink fabric does so um, it's wanting to stretch out um, and I would use a walking foot uh, firstly I do uh, more pins along here to give you lots of reference points for it not stretching and then use a walking foot if you've got one um, because it stops the layers um, slipping against each other um, if your fabrics are the same um, stretchiness or they're both woven then you don't necessarily need to do that so there we go what we're going to do now is um, we're going to stitch down one side of the V and then come all the way to where this pin is and then we're going to put the needle down, pivot and stitch back up the other side. So I will see you at the machine. Here we go, so I'm at my machine, I've got my um, uh, fabric in and I'm going down one side of the V. Um, I don't have my walking foot on because it's incredibly noisy and you wouldn't be able to hear a thing I was saying. Um, but if I was worried about, see, actually in fact you can see it already, this pink layer is starting to shift back this way and the white one shift out that way and that's because it's stretching and they're not they're not staying together as they move, they're doing this against each other. So to get a really crisp edge if you've got fabrics with differing stretch or one more slippery than the other for example use a walking foot it does make a difference and then what I'm doing is I'm trying to stay at my half inch seam allowance and I'm going towards this pin and once I get close to the pin I'm going to use my hand wheel here to oh, I'm still quite far away hand wheel here to get close um, there we go I'm right on top of it there don't use your pedal when you're getting too close to the pin and I've got my needle down and now I'm going to press up my pull up my presser foot and rotate the whole garment all the way around so that I'm now facing the right direction to stitch back up the other side of the V. <coughs> oh my dress is slipping off the table. There we go. Here we go, all the way back up the other side of the V. Now, if you are doing um, the garment where you are not wanting the, um, uh, where your outside layer is not see-through, then what you could do is um, serge each of these edges once we've cut into here, which we'll do in a moment. Um, I am, these seam allowances between the 
outside of the dress and the inside of the dress are going to be visible because they're going to be between the lace and the lining um, so I don't want to finish these I'm going to just trim mine because um, I, I don't want to be able to see serger thread from the outside of the garment but um, what we're going to do first in fact before we cut ah, before you cut don't cut yet or don't finish it yet check you've got it the right way around um, it is absolutely devastating to get this the wrong way around and then um, uh, and then have to unpick it if you've already finished the edges so so we've just finished it like that I want to check that I've got my my two layers the right way around and my seam allowance is where I want it um, which hopefully you did by pinning or basting or clipping earlier so I've start again explain what I'm doing so I've got it them um, uh, how I stitched it and then now I'm turning it through um, and I am looking at how it will be on the finished garment and I can't turn it all the way through yet because I haven't clipped into my seam allowances but if I, I turn them through so that that's the inside of the seam there which is going to be my neckline is it the right way around so I'm looking down here yes my raw edges are inside on the on the lace and then I look at the back and oh yes they're inside the garment there so when I look here can I see a seam allowance from the lining haha -ha, no I can't so that's uh, wrong side of the lace to the right side of the lining um, once I've turned it through which is perfect I'm pleased with that so I will turn it back now um, now there is um, where you want to clip into um, so that we can turn it through because otherwise the V is not going to lay flat is straight down the center of this V now um, if you only clip halfway down for example that is not going to turn through it's going to turn through with a funny little bubble just here and it's not going to sit nice and flat but if you clip too close because of the way that the when the garment turns through there's pressure on the seam allowance it's pulling it open um, you will um, depending on your fabric type you will, could end up with a hole so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, snip down a little way and then I'll turn it through and check um, and I'm using the tip of my scissors um, I'll turn it through and check and if I'm not happy with it um, rather than uh, I've left about an eighth of an inch between my stitching and where I've clipped um, rather than clip further what I would do when I turn it through is give it a bit of a wiggle and a press and see whether I can force it to sit straight rather than clip more which then it could over time end up with a hole so um, we're not going to do that right now because we also need to do the back neckline first um, and it might um, the more times you turn it through um, the more times that kind of fabric wiggles around and could end up with a hole so we're not going to do that right now um, what I am going to do um, is trim this seam allowance here um, and I'm going to trim it as neatly as I can because oh, what's going on there Oh no, I've just stitched over my seam allowance, that's fine. Um, because um, what I um, have with this particular one is lace where I'm going to be able to see um, the seam allowance inside the neckline. Um, if you have an opaque outer layer then you could um, trim it or you could serge it or you could just leave it. Now my little caution against serging this, which you could do because now I've clipped in there, you could serge along one side and then along the other side um, like we did with the... Um, uh, so we're going to do our back neckline first. So um, I've got my dress on the machine, I'm going to start at my I'm doing my left hand side here and I'm going to go around this back neckline keeping the button loop whether it's inside or on the outside um, free and then down the back um, and um, you can either stitch around the neckline and in the tutorial you will see the stitching go right off the edge of the garment and then you make a new seam to go down the back or what I'm going to show you here is pivoting it um, either one is absolutely fine so I'm coming around here and then this is the bit here where you want to make sure you don't get your ribbon loop in the way and I'm just going to hold it out of the way with my finger but you could also pin it out of the way um, and it is really close to where your stitching is going to go so just be cautious of that if it's on the inside um, uh, because you don't want to run over it and then when I, when I come straight down I've put my needle down 
needle down, lifted my presser foot up, turned it around just like we have when we pivoted on the V and then I'm going to put my presser foot down but as I do that I'm just going to make sure my ribbon loop is not twisted and if my ribbon loop was inside what I would do is probably just take a pin out and just have a little peek in between the two layers and um, make sure that it was straight and nice before I carried on. And then I'm just stitching straight down the back. Now if you've done the partially open back, what you want to do is stop when it gets to the um, uh, to the stitch where you've stitched up the back. Um, oh, my pins have fallen out. Um, and just go quarter of an inch past that seam. Now I'm not interested in the other side of the back as we approach the bottom. For the open back, I'm just stitching straight down this side and then we'll start a new seam for the um, uh, for the other side. And what I'm doing here, let me see if you can see this. Um, if I, I've just pulled the whole part of the dress over to this side, so my other side of my back is down here. I've pulled it all the way over, and um, in fact, I'm going to take out the pin at the bottom because I really don't want anything in my way of the other side. And what I'm aiming to do, oh, this is hard to show you. There we go. So what I'm aiming to do is I'm aiming to stitch, and I'm pulling this over to the side because I want to show you, I will straighten it up before I stitch, is I'm going to stitch straight down this bottom bit and I'm aiming to make my stitches go about um, right into the, um, uh, the, the gap in between the two back pieces, you know, where we stop stitching right in the middle of the centre back. I want to aim my stitches so that it finishes right there and then that way when I turn it through it's going to be really neat um, and my um, uh, yeah so I'm going to stitch straight straight down there like that um, there we go and then you can either just keep stitching straight into the seam allowance or do a back stop there um, either way is a fine um, and then um, from your threads and we're going to stitch the other side. Now what I'm going to do for the other side is I'm going to start at the bottom of the back and stitch up and around um, mainly because my fabric's pink and that side's white and that side's hard for you to see but you could um, just as easily, um, in fact you can see that so I'm going to flip it over and make it easy for myself because it's kind of hard stitching from that tiny bit upwards it's much easier to approach it um, if you're doing the fully open bit down the centre back now remember I said about the different levels of stretch, so this has a, a started to sit like that. I'm pulling the shoulder up so that right at the seam allowance where I'm going to start stitching it matches. Stitching around this corner and again I could stitch off the edge and then start a new seam for going down the back, whichever you prefer. In fact I'll do it that way so you can see the difference. It's, it makes no difference practically. Um, what there is to note though is as you come around this corner make sure that you are bang on your seam allowance um, coming across the, the corner of the, of, the, of the back neckline before you go down the centre back because if you are not, if you are slightly further up or slightly further down as you come around this back neckline then um, you're going to have your back pieces be different lengths. There's nowhere else to adjust this now so that is your... Um, where it's gonna where it's gonna be um, and then I'm I've taken it off the edge and started again and I'm just going to stitch straight down the back um, keeping my seam allowance again if I was doing the partially closed back I would have just stopped quarter of an inch past where that goes to yeah this is much easier to do it this way I would definitely flip the dress over it stitch from the other side if you can and as I get close to the bottom I'm gonna sweep this other side of my back piece out of the way and make sure that I'm stitching down towards that gap I mean if, technically if I'm following my seam allowance I should be it should be exactly perfect but these things don't necessarily always work out like that so there we go that's our stitching and then let's go back and we're gonna clip it and turn it all through 
So there we go. Um, I have stitched down my um, around the back neckline and down the back, or if you've done partially closed, um, to about there. Um, and uh, now what I want to do is clip and get this ready to turn through. So again, um, for this, I want to keep this um, as bulk free as possible. So I'm just trimming this in half. Um, but if you had a super free fabric, um, then you might want to serge these. Um, well, and what I've done is I've cut down and around the neckline and then when I get to, in fact, we'll do this bit first. Um, uh, then I'm going to cut um, down my centre back seam here. And when I get to the bottom, be really careful not to cut anything except your seam allowance. And then this corner, now this is a bit bulky, so I don't really want this like this. What I'm going to do is cut across my corner, but I'm going to make sure that I only go to about an eighth of an inch um, uh, close to that corner. And if I have difficulty turning it through, this is another place I would come back and snip a little bit more off to get rid of some bulk. But hopefully that will be sufficient. And then keeping my button loop out of the way and before you trim this side of your neckline whichever side your button loop is on definitely turn it through and just check you haven't stitched your button loop into anything by accident if you've done the button loop if you're doing the thread loop um, for the line division you won't have done that yet you need to do that after um, we've turned this through and in fact any time after we've turned it through is good now I look like I'm doing this with not much care but actually my fingers are underneath and I'm holding on to the fabric underneath making sure I'm not catching anything there. Um, the other way is to hold it down on the table obviously do that. Um, now when I get to this button loop there are two places this is stitched. One is in the seam where we're going to turn it through and then one is in the seam allowance where we originally stitched it to hold it. What I want to do is cut to the um, far side of that because I don't want to cut that bit off because that just gives it just that bit more um, security to have it stitched in the seam allowance and there as well. Um, if this is too much bulk when you turn it through what you could do is just run over a couple of times with your sewing machine right on that stitching there to give it more hold and then you could cut that bit off. Um, I also want to cut the corner um, and because I really don't want to cut that stitching this corner I'm going to cut on a bit more of an angle um, like none of this stuff is necessary this is just how I prefer to do it you could just follow exactly the pattern and just snip the whole corner off but I like to make sure I've got that little bit of security there now the last thing for the um, this lined version before we turn it through to talk about is the uh, sleeves so if you are um, wanting absolutely no raw edges to show in your garment what I would recommend is you do now what it recommends in the pattern uh, for that option which is um, uh, pin your sleeve raw edges together like so um, and then stitch down and around and then that way when you turn it through your sleeves will be completely finished and the raw edges will be tucked inside just like on the neckline now um, a word of caution before you do that, it's going to depend on the look you want. So have a look through the tester gallery on our website, which um, if you go to the Porsche Party Dress um, pattern page where you would have uh, purchased the, the free pattern from, um, if you scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, you'll see a whole heap of photos of different testers. And some of them you'll see have done lining and some of them you will see um, at some of them it's completely not obvious because of the fabric type and then others you'll see what they have done which is you could leave these completely free and not finish them in that way now I'll show you my um, uh, my lined one here um, I have finished these two separately so these are my two sleeve raw sleeve edges I have not stitched them together I have kept them apart because this is super 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 drapey fabric and um, or what I want it to do is just hang uh, really easily and really um, relaxed. I don't want the two of them together and moving together. I want them separate and giving me that really drapey, drapey look. So if you're not sure, what I would recommend you do is turn it through, try it on and see how you like the, the shoulders. If you are thinking you want it um, finished along that raw edge, then uh, pin it or baste it or not, in fact don't pin it, clip it or baste it and then turn it through, try it on and just see what you think of it. Um, but assuming you're going to leave these um, unfinished at this stage and you're going to 
um, do what I do which is um, finish them separately then the next thing to do is turn it through and we get our first look at how our lined garment is coming together so um, do that now um, what I do is I push the um, the neckline through to the um, to the hem and then my two garments are separate oh I've turned it the wrong way through um, that's not what I want to do turn it back I'm going to take the um, Ah, this is so difficult doing it on a table. Um, I'm going to pull them through. There we go. And then I'm going to put the lace. So now they're completely separate. The, I've got my lining here, my outer here. So they are two totally separate things, which is that picture, which is um, a picture 5.6 on the pattern, which looks really weird where you've got one above the other. Um, and now I'm going to turn it, um, put the the main fabric I'm going to pull it back down so that then um, it comes through and it's all a bit weird and uncomfortable but once you get it through it's through and then hallelujah look it's a neckline um, so I'm going to fiddle about and get this all the way through um, and then um, I'll show you the next bit so my garment is now right side out the way I want it to be and oh my goodness my daughter is going to love this and uh, this is totally impractical for a four year old but oh my goodness she is going to absolutely adore this this is so her kind of thing pink and sparkles everywhere <laughs> she would wear glitter every day if I let her um anyway uh so I've got this turned through um, now this um, point of the V has um, come out slightly curved it hasn't come out exactly pointed which is what I was aiming for so either I could turn this back through um, and clip this a little bit more or I'm going to give it a bit of a wiggle and kind of press it down with my finger and see if I can kind of force it um, uh, a good way to kind of do that is like just kind of wiggle and I can feel that that's all the way into the edge and I think by the time I press that that is going to come out in about as good a V as it's going to uh, with this particular you see here I've got this really thick bit of lace going straight into the V that's really irritating um, what I would have wanted is this mesh bit going straight into the V because that would give me a really crisp edge but whatever my daughter is going to love it anyway so um, that uh, that's how you do that little bit there and then along these edges here uh, what I want to do is roll my lining so that it is towards the back of the fabric see here when I look at that I only see the lace I don't see the pink bit underneath except under the lace where I want it to alternatively if you don't roll it what you could end up with is your edge looking like that where you can see the pink and you can see the lining behind so as I, I haven't pressed this yet uh, once I do press it I'm gonna uh, but what I'm gonna do is probably press it inside out and I'm gonna um, roll this around so that I can just see the lace as I press it which means as I look from this side I'm gonna see the lace um, not the lining now what that does is it will misalign my top by about a millimeter two millimeters but given that this lace outside layer is more stretchy than the inside I'm really not bothered and unless I was doing the doll size frankly you're not going to miss that millimeter and you are going to get then a really nice edge to that so I will do that on both of those edges and then if I had stitched the armhole which I have not I would do the same on the armhole and then if I flip it over there's a couple of little points here to show you um, the first is this point here I have just wiggled it with my finger um, and I have got that nice and out and then there is a sequin stuck underneath there and that's giving me a little lump it's really annoying as well so I might turn that back through and cut that off or, or I'll just leave it um, and I'm I'm quite happy um, with that um, and um, then on this back edge I'm going to do the same thing um, roll my lace so that um, you can't see the lining underneath and then I've got this um, because I've done this this way through with my um, uh, with my seam allowance for the underside layer on the inside of the garment versus how it's designed which is to have both seam allowances touching on the inside and between the two layers um, then um, I've got this kind of funny little bit at the bottom so what I'm gonna where the seam allowance is kind of poking through so what I'm gonna have to do is just very gently clip into that so that then I can put that seam allowance inside and then on the other side here I'm gonna have to do the same 
I'm going to just clip into that very gently, um, not very far at all. So then I can poke both of those down into that little bit there and then I get a nice finished V at the bottom there. If you have done the partially closed back, you'll be able to stitch down. Well, when you turn it through, it'll be like a V. It'll be exactly the same as the front here. So you're just looking to get a nice crisp edge there. And then the last little bit to look at when you've turned it through is this back neckline curve. Now you'll note I did not clip into my seam allowance, which if you're an experienced um, with patterns you know that you would normally do that around the curve because this is where the whole back weight of the garment is going to be I don't want to compromise the integrity of that seam allowance because that is all of the weight is on the shoulders and then pulling around this back bit so I want to keep that seam allowance intact if I can so what I do is I turn it through and check it and then if I need to I'll go back and clip it so um, um, I'm actually quite happy with by the time the garment is hanging off the shoulders that that's going to sit really nicely once I um, uh, once I've pressed it. But if, for example, you're finding it's kind of pulling and it's oh, I don't know how to show you that and it's it's not wanting to curve into your nice curve shape if it's kind of holding like that because the seam allowance underneath is on is tighter than the this edge here then just turn it through again and uh, what you need to do is give it a little um, a little clip about I would do it probably every inch to start off with a half to a third into the seam a third to a half into the seam it's, oh no my ribbon is on the inside oh no I did my ribbon as if I was not having the seam allowance on the inside okay so how annoying all right I'm gonna have to do my ribbon again um, and um, attach it here but there we go there's a good learning if you're doing your if you're using a lace you're gonna want your you're gonna want your ribbon so that it is on the lace layer so that when you turn it through it then pokes out so your ribbon needs to be in between the two layers when you're uh, turning it through and if it's not it's in the wrong place so try it pin it, clip it, baste it, whatever you need to do, turn it through, check so that you don't make that same mistake. That's all right, I can fix that. Um, so now what you need to do is go away and press it and then we're going to do the shoulder seams and then the only and then we're down to the last finishing bits on this one as well. So we're going to now do the shoulder seams. I've got my dress with the um, the back facing upwards. Now this is one of these kind of really bizarre things. I have to say I so didn't even believe that this was how it would work until I did it. And I was like oh my god it works. Like I mean it's kind of like theory and then you're like whoa wow it's like magic this particular bit. So I've been really excited to show you this. Uh, we're going to stitch across these shoulder seams but we're going to do it from the hemline which sounds really weird. So bear with me and we're going to do this. Um, first what I want you to do is line up your shoulders so that you've got your outside and then your lining and you've got your dress right side out by the way um, which obviously you can probably tell by seeing my lace um, and I'm lining up the shoulders so that they are roughly together and I'm going to be able to find them easily then I'm going to um, move my dress up da, 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 so that I'm at the hem I'll just check you can see that and then I'm going to put my hand I'm going to lift up the top layer only and I'm going to put my hand up the dress in between the outside layer and the inside layer so on the table here I've got the um, the front of the dress outside layer the front of the dress lining the back of the dress lining then my hand and then the outside of the back so it is in between the lace and the pink layer on the back of the dress and I'm going to walk my hand all the way up the dress until hurrah see can you see my hand yes I'm out at the shoulder and then I'm going to grab all of the layers of the shoulder so this is a little bit awkward but grab the outside layer the lining and then also the front so I have now in my hand all four layers of the shoulder and then I'm gonna hold them tightly and I'm gonna pull them back through the dress now don't worry about the rest of the dress we're doing this one shoulder at a time and then I want to align them try not to let them go I've done this a few times and it's a lot easier if you don't let them go and then you're like ah what bit what so keep a good tight hold of them 
and then um, I'm going to try and align them all so that they are roughly in the same place so I can show you easily so that's my shoulder don't worry about the rest of the dress it's gonna look bizarre it will turn out okay um, then I'm gonna go to the so basically I've got one part of my shoulder here and the other part wrapped around it and we're going to line them all up and then we're going to stitch across and then we're going to pull it back through so what we're going to do first is we're going to um, use some clips to hold it together and then we'll pull it through so that you can see that it works before you stitch it and then um, we're going to pull it back through and stitch it so um, where I want to align it hopefully if they're exactly the same length if you've already checked that you could start at the sleeve edge what I like to do is start at the shoulder because that's where I want it really neat and if they don't align what you're going to end up with is your your neckline doing that at the shoulder you want your neckline to be totally smooth all the way around so um, I have gone to this kind of um, where they where they join and I want to get these the seam where they join butted right up against each other and then I'm going to fold one round the other make sure my raw edges align and I'm going to put I want to check this so I'm going to use a clip rather than a pin because I don't want the pins to catch on my nearly finished garment as I pull it back through to check it and then I'm going to um, try and keep them so that they're the same tension and I'm just going to clip along the shoulder and I'm going to use more clips than I would normally do because I want to pull this through and I don't want it all misaligning while I do that so not I mean normally I'd use probably two maybe three clips for this but I'm just clipping it all together so all the way to the edge and I'll do another one in the middle now this is going to be magic in a second I love this bit so I've got my shoulder aligned the way you know it's correct is you've got outside of the fabric outside of the fabric lining lining and um, they are all together so you've got two of the same type two of the same type and you've got them all together so let's just push this back up the dress <coughs> and we'll just check that it works so just push it back up to where you got it from and we'll just very gently because it's just still clipped we're going to check does this work and look at that it works my seam allowance is going to be caught all my all my clips are caught on the inside here uh, my seam allowance is going to be pressed towards the back because I put my hand up the back of the dress to get it. Um, it is important which way up it is. Um, it, it, I mean, you could do it the other way around. It's really no biggie, but I, I like my seam allowances to be pressed towards the back. And then when I go on the inside, look, it's finished. It's finished. The seam allowance is completely gone. Now, if like me, you've got some seam allowances showing on the inside because you're using a lace and you don't want them to be seen, then you could just put your dress um, uh, back through the other way uh, before you turn it and you could just stitch the shoulder seams and it would be fine but this is how you get it all nicely neatly hidden so what we're going to do while that's that's all that side's already clipped so we're going to clip the other side um, and um, do the same thing and then we can stitch them now you could stitch them one at a time or you can do them both at the same time so I'm up at the shoulder here let's start again I've gone to my hem I've put my hand underneath the first layer um, and I've got my dress the right way through with the back facing up I've let my hand come all the way out the top of the shoulder I'm grabbing one layer two layers and then I'm going to find the front of the dress as well and find one layer two layers I've grabbed all of them tight in my fist turned it through and now I should have four layers here the two linings together and the two outers together just get some more clips and then I'm going to line up the shoulder seam so that it is um, exactly next to each other and then and then I'm going to lay them flat so the uh, one is kind of curled around the other and make sure that's butted all the way up in that corner give it a clip or pin whatever and then I'm just going to work my way along this shoulder seam here again now isn't that magic? I, I love this bit it's like bagging out, you know, where you do some other thing on jackets um, where you stitch all the lining and the outer together and then turn it through and like magic it all just 
ends up the right way out. I love those bits. If you haven't sewed it, there's a pattern called the Saint Tropez where we do a similar kind of magic thing on the um, kind of up around the, the back cutout. So have a look at the Saint Tropez pattern on the website and you do this super cool bit where you turn it through. And when we looked through the comments from the testers afterwards, um, they all said that, that that was their favourite bit. <laughs> anyway, there we go. Um, we've got both shoulders. Where's the other one? Oh my god, where's my other shoulder? Oh, I've lost it. It's inside my dress. Okay, so we are going to have to stitch them one at a time because now that's lost inside the dress. So, um, that is clipped. Let's go and stitch that with a half inch seam allowance and then we're going to trim it so that it's nice and neat uh, because that's going to be in between the two layers or you could serge it if you wanted but that does leave quite a lot of bulk because you've got four layers of fabric and your serger threads. So if your fabric is not one that's super fray then I would just trim that to half once you've stitched it. So go ahead and stitch along there and then we will come back and stitch the other one. So there we go, I have stitched along the shoulder seam here and I'm going to um, turn it all back the right way um, so that that's through um, and check that that's worked. When I turn it back the right way, ta-da! Look at that. Um, that is absolutely beautiful. I love it. Um, and make sure to trim that seam allowance. I haven't done that. I'm going to turn that back through now actually and do that so that that gives a really nice crisp edge. If you have a lot of bulk on your shoulder, um, if you're using uh, two layers that are quite dense, what you could do is trim um, in a, a what's called a graded seam allowance. So you trim one layer really short or two layers and then the next layer not quite so short and then the last layer maybe you only trim a tiny bit off and then the, sorry the second to last, and then the last layer you would leave full. So you end up with short not a short longer long so that then um, it just kind of reduces the bulk at the shoulder um, my fabrics are okay so I'm just gonna trim this along to make it really nice and neat um, there we go and then I'm gonna turn it back through um, and I'm gonna put my hand up again to the other shoulder and pull that through because we haven't stitched that oh except go to the right side of the dress. So come back to the back, not the front, because it's not there. It's, there we go, pull it through, and here's my, um, here's my um, one that we pinned earlier. So I'm gonna stitch along there using a half inch seam allowance, just like normal, and then I'm gonna trim it, and then we'll turn the whole thing through. So I have stitched along my shoulder seam here, and I'm gonna trim it now, so that it's the same as the other one. Um, Oh, that makes me so nervous with my lace underneath. I'm going to flip it over so I can see the lace. Um, uh, something to mention, if you're doing the ladies version, um, have a skip back and have a look at the um, uh, where we did the shoulder seam for the knit um, or woven versions. Um, the knit one is the one I did first and explained it more fully. Um, if you are finding the V is too low cut for you, um, and or you're shorter and you don't have a large bust and you want to pull the V up a bit then um, what you would do now is try it on, check it and then if you're not happy with it come back and clip it, don't stitch it straight away just clip it along the shoulder seam so that it is maybe half an inch the shoulder seam is maybe half an inch lower further into the dress and what that does is just moves the dress up and then try it on again, see if you're happy with it and then re-stitch that line so that you've got it so that it's higher up and it just brings the V slightly higher up your body. Um, the same thing goes as if you're not happy with where the under underbust V goes. So let's turn this through now. So I want to push my shoulder back up and I'm just going to kind of give that a bit of a jiggle around and there we go like magic um, this now needs another press again but that's okay look at that look at my magically done shoulders um, this does a couple of things um, first off it obviously finishes the shoulders and it finishes it so that the seam allowance is hidden inside towards the back but the other thing it does is it makes sure that the lining and the dress are adjoined along here. A lot of lined dresses, what you do is you make the lining, you make the dress completely separately, and you only put them together around the neckline. 
Um, now that's all very well, except these sleeves are really big. <laughs> um, and your dress is also, if you're doing, particularly if you're doing the maxi version, um, your dress is really big and long. And if you're using a knit fabric, particularly, or a heavy woven, it's going to all pull. And what this does is anchors it along that shoulder line where you don't need any drape along the shoulder line. It's down here where you want it all loosely flowing. Um, and it just, it, it makes it sit a lot better so you don't end up with the two layers moving at the shoulders they are joined at the shoulders and they move the rest of the body and that's why also we didn't stitch the under bust seam together um, between the two layers they're stitched separately so that this can all move down here it does mean when you put it on you have to kind of put your hand up and pull the lining and make sure that it's all set nicely um, but that's like once when you put it on versus having to continually shift it around at the shoulder for a big heavy dress um, if you're doing the big heavy long version so there we go the shoulder seams are done aren't they gorgeous love this method um, if you're doing this one comment and let me know what you thought whether it's just me that thinks it's all magic and awesome um, or whether you like it as well um, and then we're going to move on to the finishing parts So um, I now want to show you the um, bust line um, which is where we stitch up here. Now I'm not actually going to do this because um, these are dresses for a three nearly four year old and she doesn't need that um, and I, I want it to be all drapey around here. But uh, what I would do is if I was uh, making this for me which I have done um, obviously um, several times before is I would stitch lines up either side of the V if I wanted it to curve around my bust because as I mentioned at the beginning this is a really drapey sleeve your shoulders don't go straight out like that your shoulders curve around so what that does when you're wearing it is when the shoulder when you're wearing it it curves around like this and you've got all this excess fabric here and for some fabric types that's going to hang straight down and for some bust shapes and for most children it will hang straight down but if you have a larger bust, because your bust is curving around, what it causes the fabric to do is this weird thing where it, rather than doing that, it does that. And you have this big fold happening down here. Now, I've made a number of these, and some of them I have left like that because of the type of fabric I'm using. I really like the look. It just kind of adds to the whole drapiness of the sleeve. But for... Um, uh, one of the ones that I did I really didn't like it I tried it on I was like oh no I can't stand that so what I did instead was stitch the line up here now you'll note there is not a marking on the pattern for this the reason there is not a marking on the pattern for this is how far up you stitch will depend on how big your bust is and this is designed for a sewing C cup which means you don't need to do this at all <laughs> But because I'm larger busted and because a lot of our testers were, we decided to put this in the pattern so that you could see it and you could make that adjustment if you were. So I'm going to show you a dress um, that has that. So I want to show you one of my dresses that has this. Please ignore the underbust V that we talked about earlier where I did not follow the instructions and it went all bobbly. Um, this is my, um, I've got it front way up. This is my, my V here. This is my um, shoulder my my sleeve um, and what I did was I tried it on I decided I didn't like the fold that was happening here for this particular type of fabric and the look that I wanted with it and what I did was I stitched well I first I pinned it and then I very carefully tried it on and then I basted it which is that long loose stitch which you can pull out again to check I was really really happy with it then I put pins in again over the basting pulled the basting stitches out and then I stitched it so I wanted to make sure I was like 110 20 50 200 percent sure that I really liked where the line was so pin it first then do a loose basting stitch over it try it on then pin again over the basting stitches so that if you once you're happy with it so that you know definitely where you want them and then stitch it in your final stitch and this is a, a knit version so i used a lightning stitch but if you were going to do the woven then you just use a regular straight stitch and the way I aligned this is I aligned it from the side seam where this curve starts to go and just beyond this let me check that you can see that okay um just beyond or just above the under bust seam um 
is where I then took the line. I didn't take the line from down here because if I took the line from the skirt, I'm going to be shooting my seam straight into the bust. I'm going to bring it kind of outways. It's not quite parallel with the sleeve it's more kind of slightly in now I'm a J cup so that's why that's almost parallel with the sleeve if you were a D cup for example your line is going to be slightly straighter so this is something you're going to have to play around for the fit of your bust um, and we have not put lines on the pattern for every single different cup size because not only does it depend on the cup size it also depends on the difference between your your bust measurement and your under bust. So I'm not, I'm not gonna go into that. The easiest way is to just try it on and pin it and then baste it and get it so that you're happy with it and then stitch it for final. So um, to do this, I would um, pin, um, I would kind of try it on and see roughly where I wanted it. And then I would pin it on the flat and I would pin with my pins, my pointy bit of my pin heading down the garment because that is less likely to pin me and then I would probably get help if I was being sensible if I was in a rush I'd do it on my own and probably hurt myself don't recommend you do that um, get help to get the garment in or in at or on or off and only pin one side at a time so that you can check it pin it uh, check you're happy with it, baste it, and then pin the other side and try that on so that you're not trying to get in and out with pins on both sides of the garment, which is really difficult. Um, so I've got my pointy edge pointing down versus up into my armpit. Um, so I've pinned it like that, and then I'm going to baste it, try it on, or take the pins out, try it on, um, and then... Um, uh, and then when I'm happy with it, I put pins back over the basting stitch like this, pull the basting stitch out, and then I would stitch up again. And always stitch from the armhole up to into the sleeve. Don't start up here and pin down in case you've got your layers slightly misaligned and you then end up with a bulge of fabric on, on either the front or the back. So start from the armhole when you're stitching and stitch up into the garment and mark where you want it to end so that you don't go too far because also how large your bust is and the shape of your bust, because um, uh, breasts do have different shapes, <laughs> um, is gonna depend on how far up you want it to go because the shape of where your, um, your uh, bust kind of starts will depend on how much of the fabric flaps over. Um, depends how basically how saggy they are or not. Or not. So trying to say that really nicely without saying that. Um, so um, that's what there is to do. If you get it all stuck with it, what I would suggest you do is post it on the Facebook group because I'm really keenly aware there is not a marking for that on the pattern. But as I've explained, that's for n numerous different reasons because we, we cannot possibly put a marking on for every single different bust shape height as well will make a difference bust size and under bust versus over bust measurements for each individual size of the pattern that would just be like a thousand different markings and you'd never be able to see which one was which so um, that is that um, the bust marking good luck with that and post if you need any help with it Now the um, very very last thing we're going to do is hem and that is it we are out we are done you have finished dresses or dress however many you're making. So if you did the lined version you are and you stitched the sleeve hole already then you are only doing the hem. If you are doing um, the non-lined version you're doing either just woven or knit you're going to have to do the sleeve and the hem of the garment. So I'm starting with the woven and I'm going to show you a method that you can use on um, a woven or knit but I, I particularly prefer this on woven um, and that is to turn the garment up once and then up again so that it's finished and then stitch obviously the seam allowance is not that, um, not that large. Now the seam allowance on the sleeve is, sorry, the hem allowance on the sleeve is half an inch. Um, the hem allowance on the skirt is one inch. <coughs> that said, this is another time when I would try it on before you do anything. Uh, because that is, um, 
you're going to get a much better finish by hemming it to your particular height um, and the length that you want the sleeve. So um, it's all very well me saying that's what we, you know, we did it for a five foot six lady and we allowed an, an inch for the hem. But, you know, if your um, stomach is flatter or your stomach is curvier or your hips are curvier or, you know, like depending on your particular body shape is going to depend how it hangs and where it hangs and exactly where you want to hem. So I'm a huge advocate of fitting to your body um, and we just try and um, make the pattern as... Um, accurate as possible for as many different body shapes as possible so you could if you're making this as a gift um, what I would suggest you do is allow an inch for the hem um, at this bottom of the skirt and half an inch for the sleeves and then that way you know that it's as accurate as it can be um, for a, uh, the average body shape for the type of for the size that you did um, and for 18 inch dolls it's really easy because they're mostly the same they're very similar shapes so um, just do um, uh, do the, the hem at that and you'll be fine but um, uh, if you're um, making it for yourself or you've got your model to hand try it on first and check how far up you want to hem it um, and if you want to um, uh, trim the seams um, and make it shorter now is when to do that before you start hemming just make sure to allow your hem allowance and if at the um, the seams here you're finding um, it's either you've either not cut very accurately or something stretched or misaligned um, you want to trim these so that they all match now before we hem it um, for example if one was longer than the other and it continued down here um, I would trim that and then I would fold my two sleeves over together and make sure that they were exactly the same length um, and trim the other one as well so that I had both sleeves the same length and with the with the hem of the skirt if you find they're misaligned at the bottom um, then I would fold the dress over <coughs> excuse me at the bust and um, go down to the hem and make sure they're the same length at the hem um, on both sides so that you don't have one side of the dress shorter or longer than the other um, if you are pregnant and you're making a lady size, um, uh, try it on and just be aware that depending on how far you are along in your pregnancy, the front might be hanging shorter because it's got to go around your bump. Um, if you want to wear it again after pregnancy, I would suggest that you cut it so that they're both the same length and then just have it so that it's more of a high-low hem. Um, if you are uh, for example doing a photo shoot or something and you want you've made the dress for that and you want it to be exactly the same length around um, there is going to be an element of having to stand there and have somebody else mark the hem for you so that you can get that um, straight so hem types um, you could do any type of hem you would like um, what you will see in the pattern is that for woven we've did what I showed you before which is I have um, for the um, the sleeve I um, have folded it quarter quarter and then for the um, skirt um, we've done it half an inch half an inch where I fold and press half an inch and then fold and press another half an inch and then from the right side of the fabric so that it's all really nice and neat I then stitch along there uh, which is kind of I'm trying to aim it for close to the um, close to the fold to hold it down um, another option you could do for woven is um, fold it up and then um, uh, like a, a blind hem fold it up and then press it back like that and stitch along there using a blind hem technique so that when you unfold it and press it you've just got your little dots along there um, I'm not going to show you how to do that if you know how to do that now you could um, otherwise um, uh, there's lots of videos on YouTube how to um, do a blind hem because it does slightly depend on your um, foot attachment so I, I won't go into that right now um, another option you could do um, particularly if you've got a um, beautiful drapey fabric is a roll hem um, either on your searcher <coughs> excuse me or your sewing machine um, if you do it on your surgery or your sewing machine and you use a really tight tension that's going to result in more of a kind of rope feel along the bottom of the dress with a roll hem um, uh, and it won't be very flexible and it will kind of um, stick out like that a little bit um, and that will kind of puff the dress out at the bottom that's a really nice look um, or you could do a lettuce hem um, oh no actually let's talk about knits separately so um, uh, those are the things that I would do for a woven hemline um, I also saw some of our testers on their um, sleeves 
I mean, in fact, I've got a couple of them on their um, hems of their dresses where they had um, a knee length or a, a midi or a above knee length. Um, they finished the hem and then they attached on um, the back of the fabric a trim, like a rickrack or a, a lace, so that you it was just poking out underneath from the right side of the fabric so you could just see it. That was really a lovely way to finish it. Um, what else could you do for wovens? I think that's probably about it for wovens. If you think of something else, make a comment so that other people um, could be like, oh yeah, that's a good one as well. Um, so there's lots of different ways you could hem it um, if you're doing a woven. If you're doing a knit, um, again, there's a few um, different ways you could um, do that. Um, what um, I have done on, let me show you this one. Um, this is one of my ones here is I have surged the edge and then I have folded it under to the wrong side and then I've used a, um, a twin needle to um, um, <coughs> to stitch that along or if you've got a cover stitch machine you could use that or you could leave the edge raw and just um, turn it under by one inch um, for the knit version um, and um, hem it. Um, if you are using a really super drapey fabric that does not fray and you are so inclined, you could even just really tidy up the edges so there's nothing um, uh, sticking out and uh, leave it completely raw. And for my um, lined version here, that is what I'm going to do with the sleeves. So uh, moving on to the lined options, they're exactly the same options as you've got for all of the other fabrics except um, for this one I'm going to use two different methods <coughs> because I want to finish this under layer so I'm going to um, uh, turn this the hem of this uh, pink one under whoops I'm probably going to surge it first because this one has a tendency to roll a little bit um, uh, when it comes straight out of the wash so I'm going to surge I'm going to surge along my raw edge without taking anything off and then I'm going to press it towards the um, towards the inside of the dress because I don't want it showing on the outside and I'm going to stitch that probably using a twin needle um, maybe a lightning bolt but probably a, a twin needle um, and if you're using a twin needle on knit fabric you don't need to use a stretch stitch you can just use a regular straight stitch the way the, the twin needle does it gives it the stretch and then my lace um, so that will take um, half an inch off the sleeve hem and an inch off the um, bottom hem um, but then my lace is going to be longer and so um, I don't want that look I want them the same length but I'm not going to finish the lace because I really like this raw edge of the lace um, I think that's really pretty um, I could finish it I could fold it under but because of all of the sequins um, if you remember one of my sequins got caught in one of the bits of my seam and when I've tried to stitch when I've practiced a straight hem on here it kept getting lumps where the sequins were so I'm not going to do that because the lumps just don't work for me that will drive me insane seeing uh, my daughter wearing that um yeah I, I like it all finished nicely <laughs> even if she's just going to play in this dress which is probably what she's going to do in it because it's the most impractical dress for a four-year-old ever um uh, I'm going to trim this seam allowance by half an inch so that it then matches with the finished seam allowance of the underneath and then I'll do exactly the same thing on the hem. So those are all of your hemming options. Um, if you can think of any other hemming options, oh a lettuce hem, that's another one. Um, I would do that on a knit fabric and that's where you... Um, uh, stitch using usually using a serger uh, but I believe you can do it on a sewing machine as well um, and you kind of stretch it as you go so that it gives a really wavy effect um, again I'm not going to show you how to do that here that's a whole tutorial on its own uh, but if you know how to do that or you want to um, search for it a lettuce ham is a really cute kind of pretty way to finish it um, yeah I think that's it for all of the the hemming options um, and we are done with our Porsche party dress so along here we go so we are finally done thank you so much for all of your listening and for all of the work that you've put into your garments along the way if you have any questions at all uh, post them on our facebook group the link is in the pattern um, or and or um, 
um, if you're on YouTube um, just post underneath the video uh, we do check regularly for messages on the Facebook group there are women from all over the world um, who are on there uh, many of whom have sewn this particular dress so uh, if you want quick advice you're in the middle of sewing something you want some help post on there and hopefully someone in your time zone will have made it and can help so I've now got four beautiful Porsches for my dress for my daughter um, and I've already got a whole heap for me so this is like I am Porsche out for the moment um, but I absolutely love this dress I hope you do too um, do make sure um, if you have not sewed it yet that you try it on regularly along the way to make sure you get the best possible fit for you there's a whole heap of um, tips throughout the tutorials but if you are um, just tuning in for the first time and you haven't sewed it yet and you get stuck with the fit then um, do post on our group and we will do our very best to help you if you post a photo so thank you ever so much I'm going to go off and finish all of my hems and um, present these to a very happy daughter in the morning I can't wait to see what you've made thank you so much and if you've got ideas on what other sew alongs you want to see next post them below so that we can know what you're going to want to watch thanks very much bye